visit us on the web at nilfiskyou.com. Nilfisk University is the cleaning equipment industry's most comprehensive web-based training and interactive learning resource. Your degree in success is just a click away at Nilfisk University. Welcome to Nilfisk University, where excellence is attained through active learning. This module provides use and care training for the Advanced SW4000 Rider Sweeper platform. This course is not intended to replace the operator's manual that ships with the machine. Please read, understand, and follow all safety and operating instructions in the operator's manual. Doing so will ensure years of safe operation and optimum performance from the machine. By successfully completing this training module, you'll be able to describe what items should be inspected before use, explain all user interface buttons and levers, understand the brooms off and neutral functionality, describe how to inspect the main broom and side brooms, explain the steps necessary to start the sweeping system, explain how to remove and replace the main broom, describe how to adjust the main broom height, explain how to fill and maintain the optional dust guard system, list daily, weekly, monthly, and yearly maintenance items, describe how to properly store the machine at the end of the shift, and describe how to efficiently and safely sweep with the machine. This training will begin by following the steps in preparing, using, cleaning up, and storing the SW4000 during a regular shift. This will be followed by a maintenance section to address how to keep the machine functioning properly for many years. Before beginning a sweeping shift with the SW4000, the machine must be properly prepared for use. If the SW4000 was properly stored, as will be covered later in this training, you should find the machine at the beginning of the shift in the following manner. Machine parked with the seat propped up and the battery charger plugged into the machine. Machine reasonably clean with an empty hopper. Connect the battery for power. Disconnect the battery charger cord from the battery cord set. Connect the battery cord end into the connector on the machine as shown in the picture. The brooms are what do the debris sweeping work on a sweeper, so must be in good condition for proper sweeping results. Inspect both the side brooms and the main broom. To see the main broom, raise the hopper and inspect the broom from the rear of the machine. To raise the hopper, you need to simultaneously press the hopper interlock switch on the dashboard and the hopper raise lower switch just left of the operator seat. This machine uses a safety interlock system to assure hands are clear of the hopper arms when raising and lowering the hopper. Once hopper is raised, you can inspect and access the main broom. Note that the hopper has a fail-safe mechanism without a hopper prop rod, so it is safe to go under a raised hopper. Check all brooms for wear. The broom should be replaced when half of the original bristle length is gone, which is about 2 inches of bristle left for the main broom and 2.5 inches of bristle left for the side brooms. Remove any wrapped debris from the brooms. If debris is wrapped around the broom, cut it out now. If heavily wrapped, it may be necessary to completely remove the broom to clean it off. Main broom removal is covered in the maintenance section of this training. Fully lower the hopper when broom inspection is completed. Sit on the operator's seat. Adjust the seat forward or backward if needed using the indicated lever. We are now ready to drive the machine to the area to be swept. Turn on the machine using the key, which is located just below the dashboard interface. Turn the key from the off position past the run position and release. Verify that the machine has enough battery power to complete the planned sweeping tasks using the control panel battery gauge. If fully charged, the indicator should be green. There are two pedals on the floor of the operator's compartment that impact motion control. A brake with a parking brake and a variable speed accelerator pedal like in a car. The brake is typically only used for parking brake functions, but can also quickly reduce the machine's speed if needed. To engage the parking brake, press the brake pedal and engage the small lock to the bottom right of the brake with your other foot. To release, just press the brake again. Make sure parking brake is released before trying to transport the machine. On the dashboard is a travel direction select switch. The default is forward when you turn on the machine. When in reverse mode, the machine will have an audible backup alarm sound. The SW4000 includes an operator presence switch. There's a switch in the seat that must be triggered by weight of an operator to allow motion to begin. Activation of the sweeping system. The SW4000 is designed to be simple and intuitive to use. 
The left side lever controls the main broom on and off. Pull the lever back to activate the main broom and push the lever forward again to deactivate it. The right side lever controls the side broom on and off with the same on-off activation. The side brooms will not operate unless the main broom is also active. The SW4000 is designed with brooms off and neutral functionality, which means that brooms only operate when the machine is in motion for safety, reduced noise, and increased broom life for lower cost of ownership. If broom levers are in the active position, the brooms will begin operating once you press the motion control and begin moving. For safety, the sweep system will not operate while the hopper is raised. If brooms do not start as expected, verify hopper is fully lowered. See Maintenance section for adjusting broom height. The SW4000 includes a litter flapper front skirt. This is an operator-controlled flap located on the front edge of the main broom chamber that allows the machine to more easily collect large, light, and bulky debris like leaves or facial tissues. There is a pedal just behind the brake that operates this flap. An operator should use their heel to activate this flap occasionally and momentarily while sweeping and before each turn to help capture light debris it may be pushing along. Dust Control. The SW4000 is designed with a vacuum-based dust control system. A switch on the dashboard controls the vacuum dust control system. The actual vacuum fan is located in the cover of the dust control panel filter at the rear of the machine. The default for the vacuum dust control system is on any time the main broom is operating since dust control should be regularly used. The vacuum dust control switch can turn the vacuum off for wet sweep bypass, providing the ability to turn off the dust control vacuum system to prevent the filter from getting wet while sweeping in wet areas. Preventing the filter from getting wet will increase the life of the filter and greatly improve dust control when sweeping dusty areas. The same switch also controls the filter shaker. It is a timed filter shaker with liberator functionality, which means multi-frequency vibrating systems for maximum dust removal from the filter for increased airflow and better overall dust control. Activate the filter shaker every 10 minutes or so in dusty applications to help maintain good vacuum airflow. If you experience poor dust control performance while sweeping, verify that the vacuum fan switch is turned on with the vacuum operating and that the panel filter is in good shape allowing vacuum air to pass through it. More about this will be covered in the maintenance area of this training. Your machine may also include the optional dust guard water mist based side broom dust suppression system. This system consists of an activation switch which is located just left of the operator's seat, two misting spray nozzles, one at each side broom, a water reservoir, and a pressure pump which is internal to the machine. Fill the reservoir with pure water in the indicated fill port. During sweeping, if the dust guard switch is on, the dust guard mist will start and stop with the main broom. If the misting tips do not spray an even fine mist, they can be removed for cleaning. The tip and filter are located just behind the yellow cap. Service of the dust guard system will be covered in the maintenance section. If you have not used the dust guard system in a while, or if the system was run dry, there may be bubbles in the lines. If they do not purge out when you first use it for a few minutes, you may need to remove the yellow spray cap and operate until water flows freely and then replace the cap. Other items on the dashboard not previously covered include horn, hour meter. If you hit the icon just below the readout, the display will switch from hours of operation to battery voltage. Information lights inform you that vacuum dust control fan is set to active, dust guard is set to active, main broom is in overload, reduce the main broom down pressure when this happens, hopper is not in the fully lowered position, thus brooms will not operate. A fault has taken place and service is required. If the optional headlight is installed, this switch will activate it and finally, the emergency stop. Note: If the machine ever does not function as expected, verify the e-stop is not engaged by twisting the switch. To help maximize productivity and achieve great cleaning results, here are some tips. Plan out and use an organized and logical cleaning route to optimize your sweeping coverage. Keep a consistent overlap. Use the dust control system to minimize fugitive dust emissions. Minimize backing up since this can leave debris behind. Use the litter flap before each turn to help prevent losing debris on turns. Look behind you regularly to confirm the floor is being properly swept and that you are not trailing debris, which is typically an indication that the hopper is full. 
When should you stop to empty the hopper, or dump as it is often called? It is good practice to empty the hopper after each shift of sweeping to prevent odors, and have machine ready for the next shift. You also need to dump when the hopper is full and you start trailing debris behind the machine. Steps to empty the hopper. Turn off the sweeping system. To raise the hopper, you need to simultaneously press the hopper interlock switch on the dashboard and the hopper raise lower switch just left of the operator seat. This machine uses a safety interlock system to assure hands are clear of the hopper arms when raising and lowering the hopper. The hopper can be emptied low or into a dumpster with clearance heights of up to 62 inches. Back up the machine to put the hopper over the location where you wish to empty it. Pull the hopper release lever located just behind the operator's left shoulder, which will allow hopper to pivot down and empty its contents. The hopper clearance is lower when the hopper is released, so make sure to reset the hopper with handle shown in picture to avoid catching the hopper on the dumpster if not sufficient clearance. Lower the hopper using the interlock buttons again. If the hopper is not reset to its pre-dump position, the hopper will automatically reset when it lowers into the machine without damage. You are now ready to resume sweeping. Eventually, the area to be swept will be completed so you can prepare the machine for work the next day or the battery will become depleted and go from the green to yellow on the battery gauge indicator on the control panel and will need to be charged. As the battery gets low with the indicator going yellow, the sweeping system will turn off, but the transport mode will still be functioning so you can travel back to the storage and charging location. Storing the machine at the end of the shift. First, turn off the sweep system and raise the brooms off the floor by pushing both activation levers forward. Empty the hopper as covered previously, and if wet debris was swept, washing out the hopper to prevent dry buildup and unpleasant odor is recommended. Transport machine back to storage and charging location. Inspect brooms and remove any wrapped debris or replace them if they are worn. Open the seat compartment and prop it open. Disconnect the battery cord connection from the machine and connect it into a proper battery charger connection to charge the batteries for the next cleaning shift. It's a good idea to take a wet rag and clean off the exterior of the machine to keep it looking great and clean. After charging, the machine should be ready for the next shift of cleaning. This section of the training will look at how to maintain the SW4000 to keep it performing properly for years of service. Scheduled Maintenance Tasks Table. This image is from the operator's manual that was provided with the machine. Take a moment to read through the tasks and the frequency of these tasks. A few of the most common maintenance tasks will now be covered. For more detail on these tasks or for detail about maintenance not covered in this training, contact your advanced service dealer or consult the service manual. In addition to the specific maintenance tasks, it is a great idea to complete a machine walk around each day specifically looking for anything that is not correct on the machine. Addressing found issues quickly will improve machine performance and increase the life of the machine. Never operate the machine if safety issues are found. The SW4000 is designed with service access in mind. As you can see in the picture, the Max Access design allows full access for the maintenance of the machine and most regular maintenance tasks can be accomplished without tools. Broom Height Adjustment For the optimal combination of excellent sweeping performance and long broom life, the brooms should be set so bristles are flicking the ground. Setting the brooms too low will only result in additional battery draw and reduced broom life. Main Broom Height Setting Find a clean, flat spot on the floor and drive the SW4000 machine to it. Activate the main broom by lowering the main broom and tapping the motion pedal while holding down the brake pedal. The goal here is to prevent the machine from moving so the broom will leave a polish pattern on the floor. Raise the main broom and pull the machine forward. Polish pattern should be between 0.8 inches and 1.6 inches. If too narrow, turn the main broom adjustment knob counterclockwise and retest. If polish pattern is too wide, turn knob clockwise and retest to assure broom is in the proper height. Note that for unlevel surfaces, the broom will need to be set lower to assure the lowest points in the surface are swept. Side broom height adjustment. Use side broom activation lever and lower the side brooms. Verify that the side brooms are just lightly brushing the surface and not heavily digging in and bending the bristles. The side brooms do not sit flat on the floor like a scrub brush, but are intentionally tilted forwards and towards the inside of the machine. This is factory set and should not need to be adjusted. To adjust the side broom height, 
open latches to the main broom access doors and tip out and remove to expose the adjustment nut for the side brooms. Loosen the locking nut. Adjust the second nut so the broom is at the right height. Re-engage the locking nut to hold the original nut in place again. Replace the broom access door cover. Repeat for the second broom. For the right side broom adjustment, to open the broom cover door, a hex key is required. In the picture is the key that was provided with your machine. Use this key to open and close the right side cover. Battery water level check. Batteries that get low on water will have their runtime and usable life significantly degraded. To check battery water level, tip seat forward, carefully remove caps one by one, and look at the water level inside. Water level should be above the plates but below the top of the battery to allow the water to expand while charging. If level is low, add distilled water to the cells. Repeat process for each cell or cap of the battery. Caution: Inside the battery is a powerful acid and water mix. Avoid contact with it and wash hands after checking. Dust filter inspection. A poorly maintained dust filter will greatly increase the amount of fugitive dust a sweeper releases, so a properly maintained filter is a must to assure good dust control. Dust filter inspection. Remove and inspect the panel filter to assure it is clean and not damaged and that the filter seals are in good condition. Replace the filter if necessary. The process for accessing the filter is covered next. Accessing the dust control panel filter. Tip the operator seat forward. Disconnect the fan power cord electrical connection. Release the four latches for the filter cover. Two shown here and two are at the rear of the cover and lift this cover off and set it aside. Remove filter shaker frame by loosening the four black knobs. There is a convenient storage position for this frame once removed from the lockdown position. Remove and inspect the filter as described previously. Replace the filter if it is clogged by dried dirt or damaged. Reassemble system being sure to reconnect the electrical connection so the fan will run. Main broom replacement. After safely parking and turning off the machine, remove the main broom access door cover by opening the two latches at the top, pivoting the door out, and removing. Fully loosen the indicated knob that holds the broom in place. Turn the two indicated latches so the door can be pivoted out and set aside. Pull out the main broom. Reassemble in the reverse order. Reassembly is more simple if the broom activation lever is in the on position, lowering the broom mechanism to the floor. Also note that the broom must be installed with the hexagon-shaped opening in the broom core towards the inside. Side broom replacement. After safely parking and turning the machine off, remove the locking pin shown in the picture. No tools are required for this operation. Slide broom off the drive shaft and replace. Reinstall the locking pin. Repeat the operation for the second side broom. Dust guard maintenance. If the optional dust guard system is not giving consistent spray, the filter and tip should be cleaned with the following process. Remove yellow cap at the dust guard spray head by twisting it one quarter turn. Remove spray nozzle and filter. Clean the spray nozzle and filter. Soaking the spray tips in a light acid or lime and scale removal solution can help remove any calcium buildup. Reassemble the filter and tip and cap system. By successfully completing this training module, you should now be able to describe items that should be inspected before use, explain all user interface buttons and levers, understand the broom off and neutral functionality, describe how to inspect the main broom and side broom, explain the steps necessary to start the sweeping system, explain how to remove and replace the main broom, describe how to adjust the main broom height, explain how to fill and maintain the optional dust guard system, list daily, weekly, monthly, and yearly maintenance items, describe how to properly store the machine at the end of shift, describe how to efficiently and safely sweep. The instructional portion of this training module is now complete. Visit us on the web at nilfiskyou.com. Nilfisk University is the cleaning equipment industry's most comprehensive web-based training and interactive learning resource. Your degree in success is just a click away at Nilfisk University.